coming fast. Sorry about that, stopped recording uh, after like 15 minutes and I didn't realise. So yeah, where were we? We got job lots which were very beneficial to the project basically. Uh, then I sort of sold some parts that I didn't need because I went from VJ21 to uh, VJ22 engine to 21. So there was the SAPC controller uh, for the power valves which only works on VJ22s. So I sold that for 100 quid. Then I sold the uh, RGV carbs for 80 quid and bought uh, the VJ21 carbs, which are arguably easier to set up, more reliable, because you, know, you don't need the air solenoids and stuff. So bought that for 100 quid. So I basically effectively got them for 20 quid if you think about it plus minus and uh, after that yeah uh, then came the main turning point for the project which was buying f a frame so basically I bought uh, I saw on eBay uh, someone selling an RGB 250 frame with a V5 now if you're not from the UK a V5 is your registration document uh, to ride on the road for a motorcycle so that means it's it's basically uh, got a number plate and uh, it's roadworthy well, apart from MOT and stuff but yeah it just it's registered so it's a lot easier to get on the road so basically uh, a V5 with a RGV250 frame is uh, pretty good so I bid on that I was the highest bidder and I got the frame now the guy uh, he had listed it as uh, damaged frame because the engine mounts on RGVs over here they're quite notorious for cracking if your chain tension is too tight now this one uh, the mounts had cracked and then they'd basically one had snapped off completely and one had been repaired by someone's welding which wasn't very good and yeah so it would need basically new mounts so that's why I got it cheap but the guy did include a second frame uh, for me, which I could possibly you know butcher to get the mounts off that. So currently, the frame with the V5 is under you right there on my uh, desk, on my work desk, workbench, whatever. So and this is the other frame, the spare frame. Uh, now the thing is, is that when I bought the main frame back, I realized there was more than meets the eye. So uh, the engine mounts were obviously cracked, but then under all the dirt and grime once I cleaned it I saw that the shock mount was also had some hairline cracks and also that the cradle mounts which hold the engine cradle over here they were basically uh, chopped in half so rather than two mounting holes they only had one now when I saw that my heart just sank because I knew that that is going to be expensive and a big hassle to get fixed because basically the reason why some people do it is because if you fit a different engine into the frame uh, you need some more space for clearance for the engine or for kick starts uh, or stuff like that so it was completely chopped off so uh, my heart sank when I saw that but basically I bought it from a guy who does a lot of RGV 250 projects and his, his business is RGV projects uh, now I don't think that he didn't know I think he must have known that this frame has uh, cracked engine mounts and uh, it has cracked shock mount and it has chopped uh, cradle mounts because if if he he basically runs a business that does RGV 250 like you know restorations and stuff and he repairs shock mounts and uh, engine mounts and stuff himself so if that was the case and it was a frame with a V5 he would have used it himself but I think he just flogged it on. I didn't spot it when I went to look at the frame and you know, he sort of got away with one and I was left with this frame. So basically I'll get to what I did with the frame after that. But yeah, so I had this spare frame, which was all right. But the thing about this spare frame is that the, no, if, uh, the frame numbers have been tampered with. So there's no registration document or anything like that. He said he got it from Poland somewhere. So I don't know if I believe him, but whatever. But yeah so next up we uh, sort of bought some engine parts so there's two types of VJ21 electrics uh, there's a K and an L so I bought the stator and I bought a loom uh, sorry I bought the rotor and the loom which basically go on the engine and I bought a K rotor and an L loom 
for some reason I you know I must have gotten confused and I bought it from Japan and it wouldn't work with it so I basically you know bought a K loom after that and I've been trying to sell the L loom ever since nobody fucking wants it so just my luck you know uh, and I sort of sold the power valves from the VJ22 as well because I had three of these power valves as well so then at that point I basically had uh, fairing panels, tank, front end, uh, frame, uh, seat unit and subframe and all I needed to complete a rolling chassis was a string arm and some wheels so at that point I bought a VJ22 banana string arm which is slightly dented over here but I didn't mind because it was cheap enough so I bought that and I bought Bandit 600 front and rear wheels just you know to get it rolling so uh, yeah basically so then I had a rolling chassis now at that point I have to stress up till that point I was upstairs in my room doing the project so I didn't have this garage space that I have right now let me just make sure I'm still recording yep so at that point I was upstairs in my room doing my project and literally every square inch of the room was covered with uh, basically bike parts RGV parts just littered everywhere the carpet was a mess I had like newspaper sheets just everywhere when I, where I was working on the engine and there were oil drips on the carpet and shit like that and my mum wasn't right happy mum wasn't really happy so like basically I think my parents sort of saw how much effort I was putting into it and sort of acknowledged that so I'm very grateful to them they basically made this happen which is this is their garage so let's just pan and zoom so from there you enter and basically it's a nice large space so they split their garage in two so there it's quite got nice quite a nice height and it's got a nice window and so this is my workspace now so basically they split it in half for me and gave me this half for my workshop and the rest of the, the, the half is theirs so this is where I sort of moved the project into so that's when I bought everything down uh, from my room and I basically spent the whole day sort of putting it together so that was the frame subframe on then I got the shock linkage which I had from a job lot, job lot of parts put the shock on it put the string on put the forks in put the wheels on and I basically had a rolling chassis which is over here somewhere unless I can find a picture mm, yeah here we go so here we go so that's the day I was putting everything together there's the forks as you can see there's a frame, there's a string arm, and basically just putting it together, there's the wheel, putting the wheels on, and there we go, we got a basically RGV rolling chassis. So at that point, I basically moved into the garage and started working over here. So let's have a look at what we got after that. After that, then I basically, once the bike is in shape, so this is the spare frame that I have, once this is in sh uh, in shape, you sort of it takes up less space than if it's all in parts and cartons and stuff. So bit by bit, I started you know bolting sh uh, stuff on onto it, seeing what needed repairing, what needed respraying, what needed restoring, what needed rebuilding, you know stuff like that. And it sort of makes the project makes a lot more sense like that rather than when it's in a billion different parts in your room, and isn't it so? basically yeah i basically assembled the front end so i put the clip-ons on the top yoke on i put the headlight bracket on the headlight on uh then i basically yeah uh sometime after that uh in the summer my dad basically he went to pakistan again uh for some urgent uh family uh issue so when he went there he went on very short notice but he had one day free where he went to the bike and got me back some parts which are basically he got me uh, VJ22 the rear wheel which is very rare and it costs around 200 pounds over here when it does come up for sale so he got me the VJ22 rear wheel sprocket carrier rear disc rear caliper and he got me back uh, some other you know miscellaneous stuff which go went a, f a long way for the project so that sort of kept me going with some parts that i needed and if i didn't need them i sort of sold them and funded other parts uh, so for example the rear caliper it uses a two piston sliding caliper on the rgv 
I'm not really that big of a fan and it was in a right state so I sold that for 20 quid and I basically put that 20 quid towards a Brembo uh, caliper that they use on uh, the Apulia RSV uh, 1000cc bikes so that has an 84mm caliper spacing so you can use a Tiger rear caliper mount for that so that's the way I'm going for that I haven't got the Tiger mount yet but I've got the Brembo caliper I bought it for 25 quid because someone had basically just advertised it as a Aprilia RSV caliper so they hadn't put any Brembo or caliper spacing or whatever so you know when people list something that's uh, without much of a description you can sort of keep your eye on it and get a bargain sometimes uh, with that I also uh, whilst I was doing that I also because I was going with the VJ21 loom and everything I had to adapt some stuff so basically the tail light uses a different uh, what do you call it connector on the VJ22 than the VJ21 uh, so I basically created a little sub loom uh, which basically bridges from one connector to another connector because I don't really like making permanent you know alterations to a wiring loom or to components I just feel like that's a bod so just have an adapter you know which makes it work in case you know sometime in the future I revert back to a VJ22 loom and engine so yeah I did that apart from that I basically swapped over the speedometer loom which is over here for a VJ21 item so it plugs in exactly the same I was thinking maybe I could just adapt uh, the connector again to suit but I just found out that basically you could take the whole sub loom off the clocks and basically just put a VJ21 sub loom on it and it had all the same sort of connectors on the speedometer side just on the loom side it had a different connector so I did that I bought, bought that loom from like you know a, a job lot as well so I did that and sort of adapted that to suit the idiot lights on the VJ21 uh, speedo are slightly different they have a different diameter so they don't fit in the VJ22 uh, idiot light box so I basically made a little sheet metal bracket which sort of has a bigger hole for them to fit into which sort of uh, it's another sort of bodge slash improvisation type thing in the future I feel like maybe I might uh, sell these clocks and go for something smaller and lighter like a Koso something that looks a bit more bling more modern but we'll see apart from that yes so the sprocket carrier I got, I got from Pakistan that basically had a cracked uh, lug on it where the sprocket goes and someone had fixed it with uh, liquid metal as you can see there so that came off as soon as I tried cleaning it so I got that welded from my local welder and basically I filed that down uh, flat and it's it's all right now you know it should be nice and strong uh, apart from that I've gone through pretty much almost every bulb on this bike is going to be LED now so I have a friend good friend on Instagram albine92 so he's got a ton of LEDs so whenever I showed uh, any interest in LEDs or whatever he said you know what size is it and I'd say whatever size it was and he'd say you know I've got some in, in the back I'll send them to you you know free of charge so I'm very grateful for my friends on Instagram and my friends on YouTube and everyone who helps up, helps out in uh, this project so he basically sent me two tail lights which was amazing so uh, basically I'll show you this is basically darkness and this is with the uh, what do you call it the brake lights on so the LED brake lights are super super bright which is good for safety and it just looks awesome as well apart from that uh, he helped me with some the sizing of some of the speedometer lights so I switched to T5 LED lights for the speedometer as well, which you can see here. So there's an LED there, LED there, LED. That's a conventional bulb. So that's the comparison. So conventional versus LED. So the LED is nice and white compared to the yellow of that. On the front bulb, I'm using an Osram Nightbreaker because I use it on my Bandit. It's pretty good. You don't have to switch the LED for that. But I'm using an LED side light, which is a BA9S, uh, cheap off Amazon. So whatever. Yeah, I got the radiator from Pakistan as well. 
Uh, now that needs extensive repair. I think there's a leak on the core and you know the pipes leading off it that go into the hoses. They're very corroded, so I need to get on to doing that. Uh, and about that time, basically, summer came and the weather was very very nice. So I sort of would come every day into the garage and start working on something. You know, when it's like this, it sort of inspires you to keep going. So. I basically fabricated this radiator mount myself out of 2mm aluminium. Now the stock one I think is 3mm but I think 2mm is alright because it basically it just holds it here and then it's sort of cupped underneath by a couple of other brackets so this isn't really holding any weight of the radiator it's just holding it in place. So I fabricated that from a piece of scrap. Uh, apart from that uh, yeah I did that sprocket carrier. I bought a used disc for the rear because the rear disc that I got with the wheel was uh, below minimum thickness. Apart from that, let's keep going. Yeah, that's there. Then I had my graduation ceremony, uh, and after that, I basically did stuff to the garage as well. So basically, I enlarged the ramp because it was only like half width before in the middle so I enlarge it on one side and then the other so I can get two two bikes in with ease without having to you know maneuver them too much and then I sort of got in the summer I got round to basically fixing the main frame here